We are live. How does everybody, uh, can you hear us? Do we look okay? I'm turning on the lights here that I just forgot because we had a ton of setup going on for this live. This is Wally with Supreme Gecko. And Nanette. <clears throat> Nanette, there's an earpiece. Can you go grab that for the phone down on my bench? We're kind of uh, running in circles here, just trying to uh, get everything set up. This is going to be a fun evening. This is your chance. This is your chance to roast me on my isopod setup. So I'm glad everybody's joining us, and we're going to have some fun tonight. We're going to do an isopod setup. It's going to be mine. We're going to do a different one, uh, but uh, this is going to be uh, a little bit of a change of pace, and we're going to do one of mine. And this is going to be one of my uh, favorite isopods. We already have a question. Um, we're going to get to Fabulous Floss in just a second. I just want to mention that we have Emily here. We have Random T. We have Frank the Tank, uh, Kyler's Aquatic and Exotics, uh, Emily, and who did I miss? Did I miss anybody? Fusion Developer. Yes, yes. So bear with me for a second here, folks. Okay, hopefully that helps. We have a nice pod set up, and this is kind of playing it by ear. Hi, Jay. Thanks for joining us. Rachel, thanks for joining us. Um, <clears throat> so what's happened, Nanette, this week? What have we been doing this week, and what do we have planned for this weekend? Um, this week? You mean in the facility or just in life? Life and the facility. Well, the facility, you've been working very, very hard. I haven't. Um, worked on the bugs a little bit this week, but you've been working on isopod setups. You finished the last, I think, changeovers of all your isopods. Oh, we did set up some new geckos this week and some new tanks, and we moved animals around last night. We spent some time um, with the crested's, pairing up crested's and finding the right pairs. And school ended today, so it's a good week. Ah, school has ended. Does it feel like school has ended? And tell everybody what you do at school. Are you going to school? Are you going for your degree? Oh, um, your I'm GED? A, my GED, yes, that's what I'm doing. No, I'm a paraprofessional for special needs. And we just finished out today. We had half a day of school. And um, the kids I worked with have all graduated from eighth grade and they're moving on to high school this year. Very so it's been a good cool. week. Very cool. What are you looking forward to this uh, summer? I almost said this winter. This what are you winter. looking for, to, forward to <clears> this <throat> summer? Some relaxation time and reading time. Very good. Um, but I hear that you're doing other things this summer as well, right? Oh, I'm going to be teaching summer school. Wow. Helping with the kids in summer school for the, the six-week program, half days. That'll be fun. <laughs> Frank says that I still need to finish school. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I do. And then I'm going back to school in August for my associates. Wow. Wow. And make sure that you talk up so everybody can hear you. Oh, I'm, sure they um, can. I'm sure they can too. We've got the fan running. I just turned off just like seconds before the live stream went live. I turned off the uh, fish tank uh, pump just so that we could hear everybody. Um, we have a, it doesn't have any issues tonight with electric because we do have a storm rolling in. Oh my that gosh, I can't imagine. This week. Wasn't it this week that we were out of electric? We Wednesday was it? That it was Monday. Mon oh, Monday. Yes, <laughs> that's how I'm just scrolling through been. some some <laughs> questions here, and I'll get to uh, Pablo's bosses in just a second. We had a storm right. roll through, and we didn't have a storm roll no. through. We have a storm rolling through right now. Uh, lots of lightning and thunder coming through. Hopefully, we we stay up. But Monday, I had some geckos coming in from Minnesota. The guy, the fellow, um, three. Yes, yes. The fellow was uh, meeting me, coming down for business from uh, Minnesota, uh, down into Milwaukee, and uh, meeting me with some geckos. We may have met online. Uh, somebody was asking about Fauna Classified uh, the other day, and I really, really like Fauna Classified as, as far as a place to find some kind of rarer geckos. So I met him with, on Fauna Classified. We went back and forth with communications, and I actually got four pair of this certain gecko. And I'm not going to spill the beans right now. Oh, good thing you said that, because I would have. You probably would have. <laughs> um, I'll probably do a video this week on, on what we received and uh, just kind of share. I'm very, very excited. When he showed me the geckos, they were just so 
uh, light colored. They were just phenomenal. And we are doing, we are doing a setup review, and it's going to be mine. But I do want to mention real quick, if you have a setup review that you want us to review, go ahead and submit it. Look at the details in the description of this uh, live stream. Make sure you get me like a minute, minute and a half video, and we'll do a review of your isopod setup. What did that have to do with the power outage? Um, like nothing. Oh, so if you tying in tying in the power outage with the geckos we received, um, I had taken my phone down to like 15%. Sunday night, and I never ever do this. I never, I always have my phone charged just in case. Down to 15%, uh, checking messages Monday morning uh, because I we were communicating when you know he was going to leave and get here and where we were. And sure enough, we had the outage and I couldn't charge the phone. So I think I got down to about 5% before the power came on. I think it was down for about three or four hours. Eventually it came back on and we um, got together with uh, this fellow and did the exchange of geckos. Yeah, uh, you know, that's that's the whole squirrel uh, mentality where I get easily distracted. Did you use your phone to track your temperature gauges or anything? Or I have you not gone there? I did, yet? I did. So I have temperature <laughs> gauges in my incubator and in the, we call it the day the daycare room, um, it, because Nanette used to do daycare in about half of the basement, and that's where we have our crusteds and our gargoyles and our 15-gallon tanks, which we have a lot of just different uh, animals, and all of our isopods. So I have a, I have a temperature humidity gauge there, uh, our incubators, our Leo room, and I have them, oh, and our bug room. bug room, yeah. So watching, you know, uh, once, once we came back online, I quickly, you know, when I had a chance, went in to see how far the temperatures dropped. And this is kind of interesting. In our incubator, over about a three, three and a half hour period, it went from about 81 to 77. A little bit of a concern. Now, if it would have stayed at that temperature for a while, I was really surprised that it went down so quickly. I would have thought that it would have maintained that heat for a little bit longer and slowly. But I mean, it, it went down pretty quick. Uh, the Leo room went down from about 79 into the 74 range. So, again, not, you know, for the animals, that wasn't a really big deal. Um, but for the incubator, I was kind of concerned. The bug room went from, we keep our bug room at about 81, and it went down to about 75-ish, which, again, isn't a huge concern with the bugs. But that incubator had me a little stressed because uh, one day last year, we went down for about five or oh, six hours. That was, yeah, that was a hot day. We went We went down for more than that. And I, I had made the assumption that the incubator, I didn't want to, you know, open it and check the temperatures or anything. And actually, we weren't even at home. I just assumed that the incubator would stay warm for, for some period of time. It really didn't. Let me catch this question real quick. And we're going to get to see if there's any other questions. And please leave questions in the comments. I like how um, Fabulous Boa did a question and then the actual question. Fabulous Boss. I want to say fabulous boa, fabulous boss. Well, you got to um, pack them and take them with you. What's that? You got to pack them and take them. So, Nanette, fabulous <laughs> boss, Nanette says, go ahead and take all the containers, put them in your car or van, <laughs> rent a, uh, you know, a 22-foot uh, <laughs> moving truck and go ahead and put them in there and take them with you. If you're going on the plane, yeah, I, you probably need two additional seats yeah. for your isopods. <laughs> Just um, kidding. What should I do while on vacation and keeping my isopods at home? If it's a week, wouldn't worry about it whatsoever, whatsoever. I don't even worry about geckos for a week. Feed the day before you leave. Make sure everything's as clean as possible. Make sure everything is, you know, up to maintenance. Uh, make sure your, your uh, weather area is damp and you should be fine. I wouldn't worry a week. I wouldn't worry a week and a half with isopods. Remember, you know, as long as you have decaying wood, you have food in there, you have moisture, then they should be good for two or th not that I want to leave them for three or four weeks. That'd kind of bother me, but they should be fine for that amount of time. Mm -hmm. Nanette, so, thoughts? No, I, I agree. You just need to make sure you have a wet spot that's not soaking wet, but damp enough for them. Hi, Barb. Who got their order? Rachel, you got your order. Everything oh, was super God. lively. Oh my gosh! What if what if Rachel would have said, "Got my order yesterday. Was <laughs> Everything was out of the deli cup, running around the box." And no, I 
I can, yeah, of the hundreds and hundreds of boxes of isopods that we've shipped out, I can count probably um, one hand the times that we've had an issue. Did the box come in in good shape exterior-wise with the shipping? We never hear about those kinds of things. Uh, Kirche says, if I have more than one tub of the same kind of isopod, can I combine these tubs for travel or best to leave as is? I just leave them as is. Mm -hmm. Um, they're established. So let's say you have something like, here's a good example because I have probably four containers of Hoffman Sega. Is it okay if you combine a couple of the tubs with Hoffman Sega? I think that, you know, they establish themselves and then anytime that you're moving the isopods, if you're collecting and moving them to another bin, it's a little bit of stress for the isopods. I, again, you know, repeating myself, but I wouldn't worry about it at all. I'm always wouldn't worry about it at all. Week. Wow. Yuck. <clears throat> I picked up lava, powder blue, and dairy consoles. We've been super excited. Emily says that's what happened with the box that she sent, that I sent out my ice pods uh, were escape. Okay. What is this? This is a uh, random tea. Um, I was giving, giving my dairy cows some dried shrimp last night, though wondering if the millipedes would like these. They devoured it like piranhas. Outstanding. Great information to share. Outstanding. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of going back in the comments here. Okay, I picked up Lava, Powder Blue, and Dairy Cows this weekend. I'm super excited to, to get starter. Um, I love the Lava. Yeah, I love all of them. I love the Lava. How did her animals get out of the box? Um, Nanette's asking, how did your animals yeah. get out of the box? Sometimes... Did they get crushed? Did the box get crushed, broken? Sometimes... Um, Sometimes, if you don't have the tape on oh. really well, the tape will work its way. And if the box kind of condenses a, even a little bit, that top can just kind of pop up and, and uh, kind of find its way off of the cup. Um, years ago, this is probably 16, 17, 18 years ago, I ordered 25 adult male crested geckos from a big time breeder. <laughs> Hi, Mr. J. Thanks for joining us. Big time breeder, big time breeder uh, in the winter time. So they came in no no heat pad, uh, heat pack. Uh, they came in just ice cold, but no tape on the deli cups. And I would say probably, I want to say 50%. I bet you it was closer to 75% of the animals were out of the box. So, so gosh, <coughs> how lucky were we? You know, cut, cut, cut with the knife. Open it up, and here's all these geckos jumping out. It was like Pandora's box. It was crazy. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Karen was asking because she's going to be packing in her car. Oh, she's oh, that... moving, moving. Ooh. Oh, okay. I was like, oh, it, no, oh I got you. Oh, I, I thought she took my comment serious about taking her stuff on vacation. <laughs> if you're packing in your car, I would leave. If you can, I'd just leave them yeah. as they are and go with that. I wouldn't worry too much about it. Um, anybody else, any, any thoughts with that? Um, I think you're, you're going to be good. Uh, Kelly, thanks for joining us. We're going to do the ice pod setup in just a second. Um, we, and I'm jumping around here folks, but, uh, that's we're normal. talking, yeah, we're there. So yeah, so that's what you do. Hi Brennan. Um, hi, Brennan. We were talking about what we're doing this weekend. Anybody have plans for this weekend? Something, <laughs> something came up. You look like you're a hundred miles away, Nanette. I'm fine right here. Something. I'm going to see if I can do something real quick here. Something came out today. A movie, maybe? A movie? Do you know? Is Anyone? Jurassic Bueller? Park movie? It's Jurassic Park. So who's going to Jurassic oh, Park? Are we? Um, I I don't know. Oh. I haven't. We haven't been to a movie in like months, so maybe we should get together. I want to go see Top Gun. Kind of a, a date night. Well, we want to take um, Crystal, to, Crystal see to see Top Gun. Who's seen Top Gun? Who's going to Jurassic don't Park? Don't tell us all about it, though. Give me a give me a star. How many out of five? How many? Yeah, let me know how your you've seen, is. How scary? Yeah, if you've seen Top Gun, give us a thumbs up. Give us a whatever number of stars out of five. Let us know. Let us know how uh, how you like that. I'm going to the local farmers market tomorrow. That's wow. about it. That's fun. Sounds like a very relaxing relaxing fish club meeting on Saturday. Who's going to a fish club meeting? Kaylor's Aquatics and what Exotics. Day? What day and time? Oh, good Lord. We didn't even talk to her. Uh-oh. Alexis is talking, talking to back to us. We're going to put a time. 
What's that? What day in town? She's yeah, trying know. to find out where the farmer's market is. Oh. <clears throat> or the fish club meeting. Um, so maybe we'll go to Jurassic Park. Um, I remember, I'm, I'm going to tell a story real quick. I took, took Christopher, our oldest son, when he was, how old was he, Nanette? Probably I think, first grade. So I think he was about seven, seven. right? Seven. Took him to Jurassic Park, the very first one. So that's, uh, you know, are they 50. hearing us? Sorry. Somebody said, has somebody, if they lost volume. So I just want to make sure. So they everybody, can, can you hear us? Give us Sorry. a thumbs up. Let us, let us know. Maybe Alexa Maybe. turned off the volume on us. So I'm going to keep going. And if you can't hear me, let me know. But um, took Christopher. He's seven. Watching dress. And this is the first time I had ever seen it. It came out like that day. And uh, just absolutely loved the beginning when they first see the dinosaurs. Great, great time. But it got to the point where the two kids were in the kitchen and the uh, dinosaurs came up to the door. If you remember that from the very first Jurassic Park. And if you remember, one of the dinosaurs kind of snorted into the glass of the door. And Christopher was sat, sitting at my side. And when it went, boom, and, and it snorted and the glass fogged up, he jumped into my lap as a seven-year-old. And uh, I could just feel that, you know, he was kind of tense and everything. So I watched it for, a, a, you know, probably another minute or so, and I looked down, and I knew that, you know, we're kind of getting to the end of this this great movie, and I really, really wanted to see it. But I uh, asked him, Do you, are you, you know, a little bit afraid? Do you want to take off? And he looked up at me, and he goes, yeah, I want to go. So we left Jurassic Park with, like, I don't know how many, 15 minutes left in, in the movie, so I had to watch it, you know, Thanks, obviously. Great. Yeah, it is what it is. That's that's what you do as a parent. Um. So we hear your annoying, annoying yes, voice. What am I Outstanding. All week this week, everything was annoying. Thanks, Frank. So I am annoying. <laughs> I've heard mixed reviews on the new one, but I, uh, I'll have to go see it. Yeah, I'll have to go see it too. I, I love. Um, who's the actor? Who's the actor in Jurassic Park? I, uh, uh, Parks and Recreation. You don't remember? Uh, wow. I, I think I do. Um, but uh, I love him in whatever he does. Um, he was in an episode of Mom as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so should we do an isopod setup review? Let's do it. Chris Pratt. Chris something. Emily says Chris something. That's not his last name. It's Chris Pratt. Um, you know why I was, couldn't think of Chris Pratt? Because I had Chris Pine on my mind from Star Trek. I kind of have a... Okay, we're I, rambling. Kind of a man crush on Chris Pine from, uh, yeah, he's wonderful. He's a he's a dude, man. So okay, <laughs> we're gonna try this. I'm gonna try this. Bear with me here. And I know it looks sideways, but this is the pod cam. So this is a setup of da -da 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 -da, armadillidium marbleized. Everybody can see the the setup hopefully. So, Nanette, don't touch the camera, but I'm can you take the really top good. off of this setup? And as you can see, there's no ventilation on the top. There's ventilation, hopefully you can see, you can see the on the here. sides. Hopefully you can see on the sides. And we have ventilation right in front, too. So a little bit of cross-ventilation going on here. So I want you, Chris Pine, Pratt is easy on the eyes. Just, just like Chris <laughs> Pine, I tell you. Um, so, um, Random T says, never saw any Jurassic Park movies past the very first two. The third one was just a disaster. I thought a disaster. I hated, the I didn't hate it. I just didn't like it that much, the third one. But I think the Chris Pratt brought some new life into it. And uh, the Megalodon, and I think that was number four. That was pretty cool. It's okay. a movie review tonight. Yeah, it is. Um, so, hopefully everybody can see this setup. And... When you see something that I'm doing wrong, <coughs> you have to point it out. So let me go ahead and did you show do something wrong. I don't know. Maybe I did. So mm. again, this is Armadillidium marbleized. We have probably about, I think there's probably about 30 or 40 in here, not counting the Mankai. Um, how long have you had them? These have been set up for <coughs> at least a year, year and a half. And I'm just going through, just like everybody would go through the uh, Isopod setup review when they record a video. Um, how long have you had them? About a year, year and a half. What is the issue concern? Um, I don't, right now we're not having an issue. They are breeding very well. We're selling 
um, some of the groups out of here. We sold a number of shows we sold online. So not really a, a big issue. Yeah, you have one minute, Wally. Right. Frank says three-hour stream. Probably could be. Um, he also wants to know if anybody has an egg curtain for a pet. That's the only way I can carton? keep them alive. Yeah. This is the only thing in this top in this uh, enclosure, and it does need decaying wood and decaying egg leaves. Egg curtain. Orphan. I think we just lost. There we go. Um, are you getting babies? Yes, we are getting babies. What is the enclosure size? 12 or 15 quarts. It's, you know, a standard shoe box. Um, show the ventilation. We saw the top. We saw the sides. And again, let me know. Let me know if you see any issues here. Uh, new in 2023, egg carton morphs. I love it. Um, show the ventilation. Discuss the substrate. So the substrate is pretty much the standard substrate that I use. This is uh, worm castings mixed with <coughs> jungle mix. I've thrown in calcium in that mix. I've thrown in some wood pellet um, broken up, you know, with water, let it dry out, and then throw that in. Not that I don't really think that that does anything other than gives a little bit of aeration. It doesn't really add much value to the substrate other than if you have this substrate going in six, eight, ten months, you might get some benefit from that, those wood pellets uh, deteriorating and decay, starting to decay. But that's, you know, there's way better ways to do that than this. Um, what kind of foods do I feed my pet egg carton? That's the um, best part. They don't need any food, so they're cheap. Exactly. Or you feed them eggs. Whenever we put eggs in our egg cartons, it seems like the next morning they're gone. Uh, mm -hmm. I love omelets. Um, okay, that's the best part of you starve it. Uh, I hope you feed Supreme Isopod Chow. Um, where egg am I? Chow. Supreme Egg. Did you say a Supreme Egg Chow? No, I said egg You chow. said Supreme Egg <clears throat> Chow. Uh, discuss the substrate. We talked about that. The depth is about an inch and a half or so. I found with the armadilidiums. <clears throat> You don't really have to go super, super deep. The, you know, an inch and a half is fine. Um, show the moist side. So without moving the camera, Nanette, can you kind of go over to the uh, the wetter side, the damper side? And you can see the sphagnum moss there. And it's not not it's wet, not, not wet. damp. It, no. it's, it contains moisture. There's a bunch of in there. Holy cow. Can everybody see that? I don't know, but there's a ton of mankai under here. So we're getting lots and lots of babies in here. Um, the, the wet side is, again, just a little bit damp. It's really not soaking wet, but it is damp down into the soil. This is so, so important. I know um, I've heard this from other people that they moisten their um, sphagnum moss but you have to absolutely make sure that it goes all the way down into the substrate. And you have at least, you know, in here, we probably have 30, 35, 40%, 38.6%. That's a little bit uh, moister. Um, how often are you feeding? What are you feeding? We feed once a week. We feed, especially armadillidiums, we're feeding the uh, vegetables, carrots. I think there's a carrot in there somewhere. There We're feeding zucchini. I love zucchini. Love zucchini. Uh, we'll feed. What else are we feeding from a vegetable standpoint, Nanette? Um, the veggie chow. We're starting to feed the veggie chow. We mm -hmm. fed the isopod. Um, zucchini, squash, supreme isopod chow. Pumpkin. pumpkin. Yep. Can't wait. Can't can, wait for this fall and getting more pumpkins. Are we going to just like not show them anything? Look at all these mankind. Go ahead and kind of put that. Go ahead and put that up to the camera and see if. I don't know where the camera. Okay. Oh, you're doing a great job. Right there. Yeah. A Turn it just a little bit. There you go. Lots of babies. This is really, it? really a cool isopod. The colors are fairly consistent. A nice creamy, uh, blonde kind of color. Uh, what else? Did you like feeding. Shrimp. We do the dried foods, we do the fish, we do the shrimp. Fish and we shrimp. Do the mealworms. Yep. We do fish food. What else do we do down there? Well, you use some of that gross stuff. So, so Nanette mentions, mentioned gross stuff. What What is gross stuff? Well, for me, gross stuff means everything else that I can find. Um, I try not to get let things go to waste downstairs. So we get, we get 
thousands of crickets every couple of weeks. So we'll get about 6,000 crickets every other week. And some of them obviously are going to be dead. They're not all going to come in alive. There's a really, really good shot of, of the all these uh, marbleized. Over here. And there, I'm looking Look at, at the substrate, and there's just... It's they're like, all over. Oh, my gosh. Those are dwarf whites. No, they're not. Oh. So every two weeks, weird. crickets, 4,000, and then you're going to have probably a handful of dead ones. It just it happens all the time. I'll take wow. those dead ones. I'll put them into a deli cup and save them then for... Uh, the feeding of the isopods. If we get mealworms in, uh, if we, I'll have to go through and pick out the the dead mealworms because I really don't <laughs> like the mealworms in with the live ones simply because they'll they'll get bad and it just draws fruit flies. So I'll pick those dead ones out right back into the tub as food. Absolutely, right back into the tub as food. Yeah. Um, I know, but if you, what I'll do is I'll feed just a little bit. You don't want to throw a handful of dead crickets into a container like this. You no. want to put like one or two crickets and gone, especially, especially the um, porcelio, especially the scavers, um, especially the powders. Um, just a great, great food to go with. Anything that, you know, if you're getting crickets or mealworms, um, we also feed crusted gecko diet to the isopods. So with the crusted gecko dishes, I'll let them dry and I'll scrape off the, the dried food into another deli cup and I'll take that and I'll crush it up a little bit and I'll throw it into these containers. And th that lasts a little bit longer, but it's a dry food. So it really doesn't mold or, or get bad or anything. Uh, what's another food? Ah, so here's the big one. And people are going to go, oh, my gosh, oh, it's crazy. So when I do a cleaning of the geckos, I'll take the poop sometimes. I'll, this, I'll do this maybe a couple of times uh, a year. Yeah, it's kind of gross. And I'll take those uh, the, the gecko poop and I'll use it as one of the foods. And then the reason I'm doing that is because what's called, you know, what, what is involved with that? Well, it's pretty much remains of insects and gross the gecko diet and things like that. So. It's all dry, you know, so I'll take that still and throw use right a spoon. in. What's that? I still use a spoon. I won't you, touch it. I don't. It's it doesn't bug me at all. So somebody said something's poisonous. Yeah, somebody asked about um, using their tomato plant cuttings. And I didn't know. I don't know. But she said that they're poisonous. Oh, I did you're kind of out of frame there, isn't it? I'm, well, that's okay. I'm showing off the ice cuts. Oh, that's okay. I um, did not know that they were poisonous. That's interesting. Uh, here's a great point, though. That brings up something very, very interesting. When we feed anything, especially the insects, especially the crickets and mealworms, what do we do? What's the very what? What do I do? I know you've done it. I can see you doing it. I can stand there. I come into the room when I know that you're going to feed the insects, the bugs, the cr crickets and mealworms. And I can see you doing it. What do I always ask? Did you wash them? Make sure you wash them as they're dripping wet with water and I'm cutting them. They're sitting on the counter. They're just soaking <laughs> wet. And you, you wash them, you right? You wash them, right? No, not at all. No. Oh, what a great idea because the hundred time, this is the hundredth time you've asked, Wally. And it's just now twenty. Micromanaging. <laughs> it is. So it's. I think it's really super important not to introduce anything, you know, to your insects. Um, and it's been brought up a couple of times here. So wash them off really well so you don't, you know, send anything into your feeders or or especially your isopods. I really worry about the isopods, too, because I just feel like, you know, they're nature's little filters, but I just worry that whatever they get, if they get something bad in them, it'll build up, build up, and eventually um, react to their systems. Um, somebody wanted to know if you gut load uh, Kaler's Aquatics and Exotics. Do you gut load your isopods? Oh, here it is. Yes, if you were gonna feed Do we would, gut right? load the isopods? Oh, oh, oh we're out. losing. Uh, they're gonna stay off tonight. Oh my gosh, it's so dark. That's nice though. Um, nice and comfy. It's comfy. Do we gut load our isopods? Mm. Um, ask or, or mention what? Can you elaborate on that? Are we, you feeding them to animals? Or are you just keeping them? Yeah, we don't feed our isopods. I've tried that. I actually. I actually set up to do a video. Oh, you can do this, this, and this with your isopods. Hi, Victor. Thanks for joining us. Um, but I set up the the 
camera and the lights and everything and get this the whole thing going and ready to film and collected isopods and put them in the dishes for the geckos crickets nothing nothing at all nobody wanted the isopods now powder blues want the dwarf whites are super great for some of our dwarf geckos they just love love dwarf whites but a lot of the other geckos just kind of ignored them so if you're feeding gut loading is for feeders um, we absolutely gut load our feeders. And if you have questions, bring them up here. Um, we gut load our feeders all the time. So we give a basic uh, wheat, <coughs> like uh, mealworms and crickets. We give a basic uh, cup of wheat or some other grain in their enclosure, cornmeal um, mashed up. But, and if you have a comment about this, because you're closer to this than I am, Nanette, what we will do is uh, also just before feeding, like if I'm going to feed um, tomorrow morning, tonight I'm throwing carrots yep. and stuff in just to uh, Luna geckos. Luna, big so G. Do I don't or feel is this like, handy dandy? I don't feel like or Miss Poppy. Uh, my turn. I bet you it's big G. <laughs> I don't feel like isopods devour the food like crickets or mealworms. Do or even the roaches, if you yes. gut load, is that right or wrong? <laughs> yes. I, I mean they don't. Well, we're talking about you know if we look at this container, we're looking at how many do you think are in this container? Probably Just a here. rough guess. Here? Yeah. It's probably a few hundred at this point. Let's say do you think a hundred or two hundred? Oh, there's at least a couple with all the mankind that are down there. How many adults? I will, the, adults maybe a hundred. Uh, we'll say a hundred. Because the babies are are kind They're of small, they don't take up, up a lot. Um, do the so the question is: Do the isopods eat? Why don't the isopods consume as fast as the crickets and right. babies? One of the reasons is because when we were doing crickets, we have a tub. You know, we have a probably a fifty quart or so tub. We have a thousand crickets in there, so right. a thousand crickets will fly through grain. So we'll put a cup of grain in there and it's gone the next day. We'll put, you know, a handful of carrots in there. It's gone the next day. So again, thousand crickets in our dubia containers. We probably have how many adults? I don't even know. A couple, yeah. three, 400, a yeah. couple hundred, yeah. let's say a couple yeah. hundred. There's a lot. So with a couple of hundred dubias, same thing. They're just going to fly through um, the food, as mm -hmm. far as I suppose, it's just yeah. such a small. They just body don't animal. go to it like the other ones do. I mean, if I throw carrots and stuff into the dubias, they're like all over it, and I wouldn't think. I mean, isopods don't seem to do that, so I don't think they gut load well. That's just my thinking, though. Victor, I'll post something this weekend. I was thinking about doing this. We have the year anniversary coming up in, I think July, but uh, we'll post something in Buy Me a Coffee. And if you're not a member of Buy Me a Coffee, Certainly look at the description and join. We would greatly, greatly appreciate your support and lots and lots of videos over there. Thanks, Victor, for the opportunity to share a little, little commercial. Um, I have cuddle bone for my isopods calcium. Perfect. Um, <coughs> Sorry. No, you're fine. Uh, Killer isopods have a great or uh, good amount of calcium on them, but you can always add more. I like two sources of calcium. One is just a bag of calcium that you can get on Amazon, you know, like for 20 bucks. You can buy enough coffee, coffee. You can buy enough calcium to last probably like a year with all of your isopod enclosures. Um, we also uh, grind up um, eggshells. Mm -hmm. And a little grinder. And a little tiny hand grinder. You put a little few in the grinds and you get eggshell powder out of it. And your granddaughters both love using the little... Uh bowl and I can't think of the word. Mortar? The mortar bowl. They love to sit and grind that for you. So we use those two. I don't use cuddle bone anymore simply because with it's, too many. It, it's I think it's great to offer another hide, another place for them to congregate and I certainly think that it's a good calcium source but there's other calciums and we actually put calcium in the uh, soil as well so they always have a good uh, supply of calcium going on. We should do a on. video on our feeding one day. Just run yeah. a video of us just feeding in different ways. 
So I tried that once about a year and a half ago to do every single isopod. And it and since I was doing it and doing the video, it turned out to be like three hours. And there was no way that oh. I, I actually thought there's no way I'm going to take all your time. Because you're slow when you feed. Because I'm extremely slow. <laughs> oh, I like that idea. Um, what was, oh, I know. Uh, what calcium do you, well, that's our last question. So we use... We use um, the eggshells. We use the powdered calcium. So are there comments? Was there something wrong with this? So what does every, everybody see with with our setup here? Any thoughts? Um, Have you ever tasted the bee pollen, Frank? That, Wally made me taste that didn't it. Make it. That didn't work. They're, I kind of lost our picture here. Let me see if I can get it back. Oh, there you are. Kind of looks smaller for some reason. If you do this. I'm jumping around. But any thoughts? Anything that I'm missing? Anything I'm missing? One of the points I really wanted to bring up here is that um, this setup doesn't have a ton of ventilation. Uh, for the marbleized, I actually have a note, if I'm not mistaken, mistaken, I have a note right here saying high humidity. So they like more humidity. So I intentionally just put some ventilation, you know, for cross ventilation on this. Now, again, we're opening this every single week. So uh, it should be fine. I'll ask a question. Why is there an egg curtain in there when there's other hives? Oh, <laughs> good call. So at, I don't know. At some, that's a really good call. At some point, I got the substrate a little bit too moist. And that happens. It, and if you do... The, the easy way around this is that you can add, you can take some out and you can add some dry, or you can put articles in here, like an egg carton. You can put more leaves, give the isopods somewhere that they can, uh, humidity wise, gradient themselves. They can go somewhere where it's a little bit drier so that they don't have to stay in, in that moisture. And you know, looking at the egg carton, I, I see a few of the isopods in there, but not a ton. So they're using it, but it's dried out since, you know, I, I made a mistake and, and put a little bit too much in there. If you're That's, using egg carton, though, in your isopods, you've got to be careful so they don't mold. Because so they get too wet, they will mold. I thought, and yes. So if you notice here, this, this egg carton has been in there for probably a couple months. If you notice, there's no uh, dampness to the egg carton. The reason for that is that it's sitting on cork bark. I don't put it right on that wet substrate. I keep it off. If you put it right on the wet substrate, it's going to it's going to mold. I'm really bad because I keep wanting to look at them. Hi, Elliot. Thanks for joining us. What are the isopods sweat up for? Set up. For. Oh, set up for. So, what are the isopods set up for? This is just. You're just breeding these. We oh, are, we aren't using them in a bioactive. They're little, <clears throat> little roly-poly pets for us. Um, we have a lot of fun with the isopods. They're different colors, the different variety, species, genus, you know, genus species. We just have a lot of fun with the isopods. Is he asking in general what isopods are? If for, you're or? asking in general, if you have yeah. a more specific question about you know what the isopods are set up for, let me know. You know, add another comment. Absolutely, Frank. I like. Egg cartons, especially, you know, with the many different little cubby holes, especially for Hoffman Segei. A female can find one of these little compartments and sit in there and raise her babies. So I really like the egg cartons for Hoffman Segei or anything like that. Victor, I have a question. I think I have a lot of fungus gnat larvae in one of my colonies. Is it best to just redo all the substrate? Personally, I would not. I would not throw more springtails. Um, you're just going to have to deal with the, throw up some of the yellow strips, and probably within a couple of weeks, make sure you know, make sure that you get them out of there. Throw a little tiny fan in there for for uh, cross ventilation. Throw up the yellow strips, and in a couple of weeks, you should be over the the big uh, bloom of fungus gnats, and you should be fine after that. I'm not eating an isopod. I tasted Who the said, bee pollen. Who said that? Frank's daring me. To oh eat my isopods, gosh! I think. Oh my gosh! Um, I tasted. I out freeze dried minnows. 
And notice little larvae maggots go right for the fish. Oh. Oh, for your fungus gnats, the oh, larvae okay. are going right over to the fish. That's interesting. And, and that might help if you do that, you know, if we're moving isopods, if we're setting up a new isopod enclosure, we'll put, you know, potato or something <laughs> down, a carrot, and then, you know, we'll collect as many as we possibly can off the bark and everything and put them into the new enclosure. We'll put a piece of uh, flat vegetable down, and then what we'll do is uh, take that vegetable. I'm holding my soda. I don't know why. We'll take that vegetable and we'll move it over to the new enclosure and just wipe off the isopods that collect to eat it. There was a comment about dried oranges down a little bit. Okay. Random T says the setup looks okay to me, but I'm not an uh, isopod Jedi like Wally. Um, I, I wish I could talk like Yoda. I wish I would have practiced. No, don't try. <clears throat> no. Do or don't. I no. can't do a Yoda. Do no. or don't do. There is no try. Oh, I, good Lord. Yeah, that's He'll about be as... will practicing this for I'll, weeks I, I'll be doing this for next week's show. Um, okay. So uh, Emily is saying go ahead and move them over. I just, once a colony is established, it would take a lot, like a big mold outbreak, for me to actually move the ice pots. But everybody's different. If it works, that's cool. And for me, I don't... The fungus gnats aren't a big problem downstairs. Whenever we set up a new uh, enclosure, sometimes we'll get some fungus gnats, but I would say it's pretty much in control, even with, I don't know, 100 enclosures now. Ooh. I dare Nanette to eat one. You you would. No. Okay, what is that? Go ahead. What? That one. Uh, here are several will work well. Yes, yeah, several will work to, uh, well. IRC powder orange do well as well as oh, gastro. Powder orange. I was. Uh, someone here will know. Okay, I was thinking that they were talking about powder. I gotta go back up and see what this color <clears throat> was. Bear with me. Is it this one? Is there an ice pod that might okay. work out in an in an arid um, habitat? We actually have a video on setting up an arid, setting up a tropical enclosure, and what ice pods you can select. So go to the Supreme Gecko channel and look up uh, which isopod is best, and it you'll be able to find I that. I thought they were talking about foods, and I was wondering where they were getting powdered oranges or how they were drying the oranges to powder them. Never mind. Been a long week. That's about the only Yoda line I know, I, no, I'm sure. we're not doing any more Yodas. No. All right. All right, I won't. I'm going to hear that all weekend now. Yeah, I'm going <clears> to <throat> practice that. So I think I think the isopod setup review, I think everybody's saying okay. Um, the only thing, again, the only thing that I would say is that, you know, again, we really don't have a whole lot of ventilation in here, but um, we've tried to keep the ventilation down to raise up the humidity a little bit, and especially in our winters. Our winters are just horrendously dry here. So less ventilation, more humidity, and that's what this isopod seems to favor, these armadillidium, um, uh, geez, marbleized. I learned that panda kings like a 70% wet for their enclosure. I want to try to get Texas holly rock for limestone for them, see how they do. I, I'm going to say 50-50 on that because they love it. They love it damper. I'm thinking with the limestone. I've tried limestone in the past. I really don't see a huge benefit to the limestone, especially if you're doing the other calcium. Um, but, you know, to each, again, to each his own, if it works for you, that's super great. Um, we just, we've tried limestone, and I just don't see that much of a difference. I, I tell you what, with our panda high faith, high faith. Um, with our Panda Kings, we'll put a flat piece of bark almost the entire length of the enclosure covering the the uh, wet side. And you can see how I'm struggling with this still. It, it, covering the wet side all the way to over the leaves. And with that extended bark, we'll find Panda Kings all over the substrate. We'll find them all over that bark. And I like bark as opposed to, I like a flatter bark as opposed to a uh, cork bark. Um, Gerline the Gecko made a comment, terrible luck with egg curtains. We don't use egg curtains on a regular basis. I don't know if they heard the whole process. It's only in there because it Thanks was a little for joining too us. wet. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's you got too wide. I use. put the cork bark in, but uh, here's the big point with the cork <laughs> bark is if you can keep it off the that the wet bark, curtain. I said cork bark, didn't yes. I? Head curtain. Keep it off of the wet substrate. If you keep it off the wet substrate, you won't have as much. Well, maybe that was an issue. Maybe not. Maybe it just maybe your humidity is so high in your enclosure. Again, in our our house, it's sometimes bone dry here. Yeah, we don't use egg curtains on a regular basis. I'm looking for any other question. Anybody else have a question? Emily says that her rubber duckies love limestone when she feeds it. So how are Emily, Emily? How are you feeding limestone? Are you are you putting in uh, crushed bits of limestone? What is the Molly? I yeah. have not heard of that. Mopani. Mopani. Wood. Mopani? Never heard never of it. Never heard of Mopani wood. Anybody, anybody else, else hear of Mopani wood? Okay, I'm glad we clarified that. Any time. That's why we're here. If it's not me, you know, we've got great, great keepers here. We'll find some answers to anybody's problem. That's what this is all about. Okay. Well, Panny. I'm going to have to Google that. I don't oh, have my, my phone. phone is sitting. <coughs> I didn't bring my phone up here. That's okay. Uh, hey, the sun is out. That storm rolled right through. Look at that. I think, crushed bits, Emily says. I think that storm, we were right on the edge. We'll have to look at the radar later. Um, <laughs> it's it shoots a lot in now aquariums. The outdoor it's a heavy wood they sell for aquariums. Oh, I know what it is. And I actually have a piece in oh. my um, bubble chroma salasalatus tank. Okay. Big, heavy piece of wood. Yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. I don't about. know anything about it, though. Yes, yes, yes. I just didn't know what it is. That, but, that cute piece of wood that I found at a rummage sale that was super heavy. But I know, yeah, it's a real heavy, darker wood. Yes. Up further, Victor says something. I know it slowly releases a chemical. Is that the wood that he's referring to? Um, it probably releases uh, tannins. Um, so is that dangerous then for isopause is what the, he really wants to know? Yeah. You know what? We never even really answered your question. No. Um I know tannins brings down the pH of water for aquariums because I, you know, I'm breeding the epistos, epistogrammas, but I don't know if it would hurt them. What I say to everybody is, you know, when somebody messages me and says, can I do this? Can I feed, I don't even, can I feed limestone bits to my isopods, my dairy cows? What I always say is if you can, if you can do this, take 10 or 20, Put them into a take take part of your soil, part of everything, seed a new enclosure, take 20 or so of those isopods, grow them up for a while, see if you can get some some mankai, and then whatever you want to try, <coughs> try that in that new enclosure. Always try with a second enclosure. It would be terrible to um, take whatever you're doing and put it into all your enclosures and find out that it doesn't work, or even one. That would be crazy. If you um, scroll up in the comments, yeah. somebody mentions, I believe, that they have it in their snake tank. Keep going up a little bit. Okay. And right there. Ah, Rachel. And it does not see dead isopods around it. Okay. So that might help. I would think if you have <coughs> other sources of decaying wood and decaying leaves, you should be better. I, I, again, I would just set up a sample colony and see how that works. I don't know, but one of my Volgari bins has a big piece of Malaysian driftwood, uh, driftwood and they have loved it. Interesting, interesting. It's fun to experiment with that stuff. It is fun to experiment. It's fun, to, and I don't think a, a lot of people are doing that, and and that's a shame. Um, I put the responsibility on myself as as well as other bigger breeders. Uh, not that I'm a big breeder. I have what I have. But I think that we as a hobby, especially people that are, are keeping more than 10 or 20 cultures of isopods, I think that we need to do more work on this is doing better than this. Set up two or three or four or five colonies the same exact way. I know, I know personally, this is what works for me. Hoffman Sagai like smaller enclosures. Hoffman Sagai like lots of little cubby holes. Um, I've had success with that because I've set up you know, five or six different colonies, cultures of them. And I always have better luck with small enclosures and lots of little, you know, egg cartons or something like that. I don't think we as a hobby do enough of that experimenting, uh, scientific experiments, not just, you know, 
I have a, and, and it's great to make note of this, that, you know, I'm putting in this kind of wood and they just love it. Um, I think we need to do more scientific experiments to, to find out better, you know, what these isopods really want. Random T mentions that leaves have tannins. Yes. I didn't know that. So, yeah, yes. so they're breaking it down, too. I actually, it's a kind of a note. I just did a big water change on our fish tanks. And a mental note that I have to put in almond leaves in our epistles. We like the pH way down. So put in a leaf. And, and we were talking about this somewhere about uh, wet leaves and using wet leaves. I put leaves. In, I, I've actually put maple leaves in some of these tanks as a kind of a base. They eventually sink. And it gives the fish a little bit more uh, hiding places. But you can see the water after about two weeks, three weeks. It starts turning, not brown, but you can see it's a little bit discolored. Um, right there. Uh, whoop, yeah, oh, any tips? Right this one? one? Yep. Okay. Any tips for getting a parakeet to breed? Uh, one of the last colonies that have no mankai. Um, how long have you had them, Victor? Because our... Uh, parakeet are just going like crazy. Lots, so a couple of things. Lots of vegetables. They're arm, they're in armadillidium. Uh, second, give them things to crawl on. Um, egg cartons. Give them branches. Give them. They they actually they'll you'll find them on the ground. You'll find them under Kirk Park. You'll also if you have branches and things in there, they'll actually climb up those branches. They're in my in my situation, I find that they're kind of an arboreal animal. So we've had success with just you know uh, lots of area, lots of veggies, lots of climbing places. Uh, I've heard the same exact thing. I'm just looking for comments here. Yes, 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 yes. We just don't do enough of. Um, Oh my gosh, I'm keeping parakeet dry and wet, and it seems like they like it a little bit wetter. We're not doing enough in the hobby to, to uh, see more of that. Got a fish jumping over here. Um, I would never notice. I would never notice. Yeah, Wally would never notice on spelling. Ever. Ever. I'll, I'll read what you say, and, <clears throat> and it's in one, yeah, and it's no. gone. I, yeah, he's, he's like... Terrible. Terrible speller. How do you spell terrible? I don't know. Yeah, you probably couldn't spell okay. it. Okay. Uh, Volgari have been nibbling on that uh, driftwood for like two years. It's way lighter than it used to be. Exactly. So here's something. We're just talking about this random tea. What you could do is you can use, you know, keep that wood in there. Take a piece of like uh, white flaky maple or oak or cottonwood or something like that. Throw it in the same enclosure. See if all of a sudden they go to that wood as opposed to the harder wood. See if they all start nibbling on that and really destroy that that softer wood. Experiment. That's a great experiment. Five months and you don't have babies. You don't have mankind. That's kind of odd. Odd, odd, odd. Uh, my yellow dots have no mankind either and look like they are always uh, plotting against the world in groups. Mine look like my um, yellow dots um, always look like they um, are running out of a burning house and trying to, to uh, run as fast as they can to put out the fire that's on their, their coats. That's what mine look like. Okay. They're just always so active. You want to kind of do this? No, I want your soda. Oh. Why? Because I'm going to dump it? No, because I'm thirsty. Oh, my gosh. I'm still almost <clears throat> All of my isopods prefer oak bark um, over driftwood. Absolutely, absolutely. She she took all she took all of my soda. It's either that or cough. Good point. Oh, Diet Coke. Ooh, I forgot. Um, uh, not a. Mantis God, you know, knows as well as anybody. I'm not a fan of the koi fiber whatsoever. I, I think the substrate should be pretty simple, and it should be mostly dirt. Um, take whatever you want to add to kind of um, make sure that it doesn't compact um, <clears throat> right so that they always have, you know, little places that they can burrow. But 
Did your throat hurt? Yeah. You didn't drink out of my bottle. Okay. I poured right. it into my cup. Don't want to get you sick. Because then I have to take care of you. Yeah, you know how that is. Yes, I do. Yeah, when I get sick, I find a corner in the house and <laughs> I say, hide. leave me alone. Um, usually I'm helpful. Usually I'm helpful one tonight. I have questions. That's great. That's great. That's absolutely great. Um, I listened to Ben uh, Quintana from isopod.com. What was that? Like three, three. And it was hard doing the interview because he would say something. I'd go, oh, my gosh, I never thought about that. And I would want to find a pen and a piece of paper and start writing it down. Um, he had so many good points. I just I felt like I wasn't doing a great interview. I wasn't doing my job with the, you know, asking questions, everything, because I was so involved with some of his answers. It's just so great, great. If you haven't seen that interview, go to the Spring Gap oh, channel and <clears throat> load it up because there's points in there that even we're talking about here in this session where you're going to go, oh, that's different, um, very, very different. <laughs> very cool. That's that's it. Right there. That's it right, right there. We do the 12 Supreme. I'm going to do another plug. It sounds like a commercial tonight. We do the 12 Supreme Days of Christmas. And my biggest thing with the 12 Supreme Days of Christmas is that we have people like Emily connecting with people like Victor and sharing information and making this community strong, mm -hmm. um, positive, non-judgmental. And that brings a tear to my eye. <laughs> Are you okay? <clears throat> I'm not okay. Oh, now I'm okay. Big G. Big G came through. No, you're all better. I'm all better. Unless that's, I, I bet you that's not Big G. You don't think it's Big G? I think Big it's G? Handy Dandy. Think she's out there? Yeah, I think it is. Okay, computers Marina are having tons of babies and zebra. And, mm, and, oh, very cool. Not zebras from your yard. Oh, and the isopods from her yard, not the zebras. <clears throat> I don't even know what that channel is, Frank. Um, that's not the fish channel, is it? it might be. I, I've got to do work on my fish channel. I, it, it's hard because I haven't. I'm going to break this for just a second. We uh, we were doing the 12 spring days of Christmas. And then we had some. We actually had three. We lost three. Uh, we lost some folks from the family. It was really really tough. In uh, December, January, um, and then we were, were sick, and then then all of a sudden the isopods are, are breeding, and the geckos are crazy breeding, and I just haven't had the time. I'm going to have to get back to the the fish and do a, a couple of videos for Emily, the fish. Emily, I, I am going to check out that tomato pet thing on Google. She said to check that out. I will. Um, Bioactive was, um, Rochelle said that your 12 days of Christmas – Convinced her to go bioactive. Oh, oh it is Big G. He's in Louisiana. <clears throat> so it's Big G out there. I, I don't blame her. I would put like 2,000 miles between me and you, uh, Big G, at any opportunity that I, I could get. I hope everything's going well with you. I know that you have been super busy. It's good to see you here. Thank you very much for joining. Very cool, Victor. Excellent. Excellent. How is everybody's colonies doing? With the warm weather, do you see more mankind? We're going to go just a couple more minutes. So if you have a question, if you have a question, throw it in there so that we can uh, jump to it tonight. Catch me on Facebook. If you, I'm, I'm going to, here's another commercial. Commercial time. If you have a longer involved question, if you want me to do, once we end the uh, isopod setup reviews, if you want me to look at your isopods, uh, if, a setup, uh, let's do it through Buy Me a Coffee where we can sit one-on-one -on -one in a live stream like this and I can chat with you. Now, be forewarned that my 10-minute conversations usually run about a half hour. <laughs> I think I had a 10-minute conversation with um, Liz <coughs> Monday, Sunday, Sunday, 10 minutes. It went an hour and a half and it was a great, wonderful conversation. Wonderful, wonderful. Here, I'm showing your, your man Kai here and there's nothing on the screen. I don't know if they can even see it. Not if it's on, not on the screen. Yeah, I'm sitting here like showing the fit, the things again. And all of a sudden, I realized it. Very cool. Very cool. 
I think I might need to lay off the isopods for a while. I hate to say it, but I have too many. That's a tough <laughs> thing. It is a tough thing. Is that such a thing? Too many? Well, really? Is uh, that really? Seriously, what I would it's do. it's not in our house. <laughs> it's not in our house. Um, find a store. Find a store, a local store, and see And buy if, more. And buy more. And that says buy more. Just pull out your wallet and very cool. I haven't had warm weather really, 70 degrees. Emily, where are you? Like Alaska? I know where you're at. I'm just kidding. <clears throat> so let's end the show on this note. Um, tell Victor how our roses are doing and tell Victor how how we did with our roses like the first year we moved into this house. Do, do we have roses? Well, what happened? <clears throat> I don't the, I don't remember. On our on our west side, side, yeah. On our west side, we planted <clears throat> I don't know, about six bushes over there. Six or seven bushes, and we pruned and we and videos and and books and pruning and cutting the the buds and not the buds, but the flowers after they flowered and big bushes and the, year two they were just tremendous. They were just beautiful. We just had all kinds of different colors and everything. And went out there with the, you know, the pruner shears and the gloves and my little pad to, to you know, kneel down and, and trim up. Went out there and all the way down the side, oh, it's every, right. every <clears throat> single bush was just like a uh, uh, one stick, like a pencil, like a That's thick weird. pencil coming out from the ground for about two and a half feet. No leaves, no nothing. Every single one gone um and then we saw the deer the next day and we saw the deer next the next day <laughs> the deer are like that. the deer are like standing there going oh, man that was so good bring out some more roses <laughs> those were really good i'll, I'll wait right here go ahead they, i forgot about they that. nailed the rose i mean just down beer stems. i think there is still one that's out there that doesn't do anything though one yeah. one rose yeah one rose bush that tries yeah, the deer of they ate all my um, daffodils out in the front this year, all the way down to the ground. They just chowed them before they ever bloomed. They ate them all. Up. But are, I like seeing them out in my yard once in a while. I do especially too. When we see the fawns come. We had well, how many years ago? Four or five years ago, we yeah, had a female three years ago. that laid down and kind of thought that she was injured. She just wasn't getting up, wasn't getting up, and never. I don't know why. I don't know why it didn't occur to us. And sure enough, she was up one day, and here were two little fawns. I think I had it. I might still have it as my profile picture on Facebook. Um, that you know, I tell you, when you have something like that happen, and you can just kind of watch the progress. And, you and we forgive. watched them for like two months. Oh, yeah. yeah she were, was out in our yard. Out, yeah. And we're not in the county at all. We're in the middle of the – not in the middle of a we're big the, city, but, yeah. It's, but there's it's a neighborhood burden. all around us. Neighborhood. It's not like we have a woods right behind us. We have a tree line, but not like a woods. We had rabbits uh, at first. Now I have chicken wire around them until they are bigger. We have a neighbor that uh, is growing some uh, He's flowers. He's got regular plants. And, and he has the big, you know, green fences around them. And on top, you can just barely he's see that they're... Nothing can grow over two yeah. feet you tall. Can't that see the, you yeah. can't see any it's of it because he's got them all Oh, raspberry bushes. Yeah. Yum. Absolutely. Well... Anybody have any questions, let me know on Facebook. This has been a great session. Thank you very you much. One for, more shot. What's that? Can you show them one more time? Yeah. Because some people came in late. And they were busy too. So very these good. are our armadillidium marbleized. Look at all the mankai down here. The spaniel. Right here. Yeah, like these are going pretty good. I t again, we've taken many, many cultures out of this for, you know, online sales and shows. But if you look at the substrate, I know it's a hard with the, the pod cam here, but if you looked at the substrate, it's there's a lot of stuff out there. They're just going crazy. In here. So Frank says Nanette gets the front chair next time. I know, really? I don't like you, the you're front always, chair, Frank. You're always in behind, you know, from behind. And I like the back chair, Frank. It's fine. I think you should Because then drive. I'd have to operate the computer and everything, and then I'd be shutting us all down all the time. Oh, it, I, it's come ugly. close for me a couple of times. <clears throat> and again, today we were a few seconds late because I was scrambling to get everything, and I'd forgotten the lights. So next time you're going to sit in front, 
you'll do the review and I'll sit behind and in the middle of the show, I'll be stealing your soda and, and drinking all of Frank your soda. Frank said it's okay. I can sit in back as long as I'm happy. Thank you, Emily. I will. It's just part of life working with special needs kids. We all got sick this last week, all of us. So it's just a cold. Now you get a week off. Now I get a week off and then summer school starts. Well, I actually don't have a week off. I have to work part of next week. Here's my honeydew list for you. Yeah, your honeydew list is gone. So I'm going to give I, this I, to I you. Did, I did an Excel. Well, not Excel, but I did a spreadsheet in my computer the other day when they were watching a movie. When I had the little one that fell asleep for me for a while, I sat and did a to-do list for my summer on my Google Sheet. Outstanding. Outstanding. should be impressed. I am, very, I am very impressed. And now that you have uh, Google Sheets down, I have a new tool that I've been using for about two months now I'm not going there. that is even better than Google Sheet. I know, <laughs> what the heck, something that's better than Sheets. But uh, hopefully if I can kind of get a better feel for this tool, um, I'm going to share to members on the Buy Me A Coffee because it is, it is pretty cool. Easy Victor, to use. I absolutely love working with the kids I work with. Love them. Nobody can do it like Nanette. I mean, it was again, hard yesterday saying to Nanette was a lot of our kids. born to work with with uh, uh, these kids that need just a little bit more attention. She's phenomenal. Good kids, phenomenal. On that note, we'll see y'all. Have a great weekend mm -hmm. from Supreme Gecko. This is Wally and Nanette signing off. Good night. Good night. <laughs>